would yeah. welcome back to our second knowledge series webinar uh, hosted by Jagran Lake City University which is located in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh and is one of the fastest growing and one of the most awarded university of Central India. Knowledge series uh, are the Naki series of Jagran Lake City University where we call various experts from different domains. This session has been curated by Jagran School of Visual Arts and Design. Uh, my name is Nupur and I'm going to be moderating the session today. So um, today we have with us a very exceptional animator and a versatile media professional who is also the most dedicated and colorful personality in the Indian animation industry, Mr. Ashish Kulkarni ji. Uh, Ashish ji is uh, currently the chairman of the animation VFX gaming and comics AVCG forum, AVGC, sorry, forum at FICCI and MCCIA and has been engaged with AVGC policy makers in India at central and state levels. Ashish ji has set up world-class animation studios in India and created the finest original Indian animated content such as his Magnus, uh, magnum opus Little Krishna 2009 and Shaktiman 2011. Being one of the pioneers in animation education in the country after having designed the curriculums for the top-notch animation schools and having served on the Academic Council of FTII Pune, Ashish ji initiated the very premium Reliance Animation and Infotainment Media School. Ashish ji is the founder of Punaryog Art Vision and Screen Yog Creations Private Limited and is developing a unique concept called the Green Butterfly Art Village at Lunavla, which aims to create a holistic and sustainable ecosystem for all creative artists. Ashish Kulkarni ji was awarded the Creative Entrepreneur of the Year 2015 by The Entrepreneur Magazine. We welcome you to the webinar, sir. Thanks so much. Sir is going yeah. to talk on the art of creating the perfect frame within the realm of animation. Um, so I will just give you a little brief about the format of the webinar. Uh, so we will start with the speaker. And after he is done with his uh, uh, talking, then we will take in some questions. So over to you, Ashish Ji. Thanks so much, Nupurji. And uh, uh, it's really nice to actually talk to uh, several people through the webinar. Uh, this is actually happening a new normal uh, right now in our industry, uh, as we are all following the social distancing. And uh, it gives me a great pleasure to, you know, come back uh, and talk to the universities and its uh, students and you know uh, the largest stakeholders that are connected with the university itself. Uh, so today's topic is something that uh, is very dear to me and I actually uh, got into animation uh, from my uh, newspaper and advertising uh, career. And uh, I would like to actually mention here that uh, you know creating the perfect frame uh, an art of creating a perfect frame is uh, something that uh, actually uh, is related with uh, uh, animation filmmaking in a very big way because uh, uh, as you know uh, that most of our country is uh, dominated by uh, the live action and the live action filmmaking uh, is in the blood of uh, the whole storytelling ecosystem of our country whether it's uh, whatever language that you talk about in this country or you talk about uh, you know various cultures and various uh, forms of storytelling uh, but when it comes to animation storytelling it's uh, something very special uh, when i say something very special is because it's very very methodic and when i say it's very methodic uh, is that you know most of uh, our kids who are coming into this space uh, for the last uh, two decades uh, have made uh, several mistakes because the universities were not teaching animation and there were hardly any institutions who were teaching animation filmmaking and uh, while it was a very new phenomenon people thought learning computers is learning animation and uh, they were all concentrating on learning uh, technology or software and uh, they thought they would be able to tell stories learning, uh, you know, technology or delivering an output out of a software. Uh, but friends, it's just a tool. And uh, the, the grammar of uh, creating a frame has to be followed meticulously 
because without that grammar, you would never be able to tell a powerful story. And uh, that's why uh, when I say that uh, animation filmmaking has a lot to offer in terms of, uh, you know, the whole uh, process of uh, learning how to tell a story frame by frame. Uh, the thing is, uh, in, in terms of live action, uh, all we do is actually, you actually concentrate behind the camera, you direct and you interact and you set your lights uh, and uh, you actually do a large amount of uh, shootings and uh, you continue to see it on your monitors and you continue to shoot till you are satisfied whether you got it or not got the perfect frames and then you go back to the editing suite and you start eliminating things uh, so the whole story is tell, uh, told by eliminating frames uh, whereas the art of uh, creating frames is a phenomenon of uh, animation because in animation if you want to create a hundred more minutes uh, film you create you know 24 frames into 60 seconds into 100 <laughs> minutes so it is something that you do uh, where you actually pre-plan things and create only those many number of frames so you basically do an addition you don't do a subtraction so that's the biggest difference when you create these frames in live action and you create these frames in animation so when i say this uh, that you only create those number of frames it becomes very difficult to imagine uh, what is going to be created because in live action the things are very simple uh, because people know how it looks they have habituated to see uh, live action on television as they're born and as continue to you know move in your life you are able to see what's happening and you are able to relate to what's happening uh, around you uh, but in the live action uh, there are things that are important to really see how the light travels or how where is the source of light and i think if you are able to understand where is a good source of life uh, light then you are able to create the best frame because everything boils down to the right lighting because if the light is behind me your face will not be seen and and, and that's where the scene will be very bad and the frame will be very uh, bad at the same time there are different types of compositions that uh, are required and how do you really tell that so i would divide this whole process into three parts one is called as a pre-visualization and then we will go to the pre-production and then we'll go to the production uh, finally we will go to the in the production part we will touch an end point which is a post-production also but in animation the whole process of pre-visualization is extremely important because in animation everything is imaginary when i say everything is imaginary the camera is imaginary the characters are imaginary the backgrounds are imaginary the size relationship is imaginary you literally give birth to the characters so when you are actually visualizing the characters for animation you need to really see that it's like giving birth to a child giving birth to a child a lot is left to the nature but here you are the mother nature to give character its life and that's why you need to really write the characters in a right way and describe the characters in such a great details and that all can be done on the hand drawing so your hand might connect has to be perfect because the characters can actually do a lot many things and characters may not be able to do a lot many things and that is to be decided by the creator who creates the character so we call it a character bible and if you are able to create that character bible very strongly where you say that i have created this character who is going to have this size relationship with other characters the character attributes the attitude of character the character design and the side poses of character various things that the character can do all that is defined so well and after you do the character bible you create multiple other characters which are surrounding characters which are called as secondary characters and they're all been set in a lineup 
against the primary character and then you create tertiary characters who are incidental characters who come into the show and go out of the show and there would be certain characters you might not design in the first space but then you have to also decide in which environment they are going to be so you create an environment for those characters and then you actually go to the color design where you you set the colors for your character as well as you set the colors for your secondary character and you set the colors for your backgrounds so that they don't mix with each other and the compositions start looking good until the time you're really uh, convinced that this is uh, the right way of doing things the pre-visualization process doesn't really end so once your pre-visualization pre is done and you feel that this is where you're going to actually create the right frames then you simultaneously concentrate on telling your story uh, mind you that in animation you know keeping closer camera to your character would save a lot of money for you and as soon as you take the camera away a lot of things get added to the frame and that becomes a little expensive no sooner you have crowd scenes or you have complex scenes we call them a money uh, money scenes because you have to spend a lot of money creating those scenes so okay. you need to be very careful when you write and one of the principles of uh, animation is that you actually write as strongly as you want to because you can eliminate scratch out and ed edit or read tell the story while you're writing the script and make sure that you're bouncing that script or story or the character design uh, as a pre-test to various uh, target audience who are uh, going to be uh, you know seeing this kind of, uh, of film so you select uh, a set of team who are going to look at it and tell you whether it's looking great for that uh, that audience or not looking great for those audience and you alter as much as possible while you're writing a story it's called a story edit and you make that story tighter and tighter and tighter because story is written between the writer director and maybe a couple of other story writers together so the team is fairly small and that's where you will be able to control you know what's going to be produced later at the same time in animation it's very important that you record the right kind of voices because the animation characters are imaginary and they require a voice of some human being and these human beings can actually enact the character so well so it's not like live action where you have actually created a footage and then you go to the studio and do dubbing here in animation you actually record the voices soon after the script is done uh, even the storyboard has not happened because the storyboard artist would listen to the voice before creating the storyboard so the tightening of the script is so important that you actually are able to visualize as you read the script and the screenplay that you are able to visualize what's going to be seen on the screen and that's when you get a very talented voice actors uh, especially people who come from theaters, people who have extremely good modulation and who have a right kind of a voice for the character that you're creating. And once they actually enact the voice, uh, the voice is then mapped along with the timing in the edit, along with the storyboard. So storyboarding ha happens simultaneously as the voices are delivered. So the storyboard artist will always have to listen to the right voice to actually give that action to the character on the screen and that's where you create a storyboard and you create something called as animatics so when you are creating at 100 minutes of a film you actually are editing a storyboard with actual voices and dialogues and cutting it into 100 minutes so all the editing that you have to do have to be fine-tuned at the animatic level which is a combination of voices and the storyboard if you are able to lock that very strongly then you are going to save a lot of money creating animation otherwise it's going to be extremely difficult creating that piece of animation because if you want to call for changes the whole cycle has to be repeated 
because in animation it's a very linear cycle of production and when you actually are going from ideation to script to screen you're going through almost about 52 different stages and for each stage you require a specialist and if anything grows wrong it's like a relay race there are 54 52 people actually plus a producer and a director so 54 people running a relay race uh, it's a, that kind of a situation and that's why when you actually uh, do that on a storyboard you make it so tight that you are able to see the whole film in front of you in a storyboard and the voices and once that is locked you actually give it to the people who are creating backgrounds people who are creating uh, the staging of the characters against the background and then people who are animating it and as the animation happens you need to also select right kind of animators for the right kind of characters because there are there are animators who are used to animating cartoony characters there are anime uh, there are animators who are used to uh, you know creating uh, human characters or creating animal characters and that's why you actually then select the right scenes to be given to the right people and simultaneously you give a feed to the edit so that as the animation starts coming in the level one animation or the level two animation or the final animation all gets approved and simultaneously goes to the edit so that you are able to see as a director you are able to see all the scenes that are coming in and there is a proper hookup between the last scene and the, the the scene which is the next scene because there might be two artists who are doing these scenes differently at different places and that's where you actually see that before your information kit which is the character bible the show bible and your pre-production kit which has animatics storyboard and the final voices all these have to be given to the artist uh, on the shop floor uh, to make sure that your uh, your studio is creating the right kind of uh, you know uh, staging posing as well as the key animation and as this thing happens then you further uh, add levels to the animation whereas you divide the whole frame into multiple layers there's a background layer there's a foreground layer there are different character layers so if you take a frame it can be probably a simple frame can be about 8 to 10 frames to a complex frame can also have about 200 different layers so 8 to 10 layers to about 200 different layers that you can actually make your scene so complex and if you have more than 20 layers it, it becomes a money shot and uh, that happens when you actually add the crowd or any many trees or you know large number of objects to to the scene and as you are creating this the background painters and uh, the character painting team and everything actually in in the 3d space uh, there are textures that are used and uh, all these different elements starts coming together and then there are the specialist people who are actually very specialized into the facial animation because in animation whether it's a human being or a cat or a dog or a dinosaur or even a pencil or eraser or a mobile phone can become a character and all of them can have human expressions so you need to constantly be an actor you have to go to the uh, you know uh, uh, mirror you have to watch yourself you have to act it out you have to record you have to ask somebody to record it and use that as a reference uh, to give those expressions to the characters and that's a very important thing at the same time even as all of them deliver dialogues as a character there are people who are specialists on the lips so now there are certain softwares which tell you which lips to be used but uh, traditionally how we used to do it is that there are people who are specialists in reading what would be the lip position for what, what character and then frame by frame you add as you're listening to uh, the dialogue you actually add those kind of lips so that when they are talking you are able to see that their talking sense and the lips are in the right kind of movement so as you are doing this uh, the scenes get ready they get approved and comes another layer of effects so there are you know character might be you know walking or running on uh, 
uh, on a plain ground so there would be a dust uh, which is going to fly and frame by frame you need to add dust uh, there might be characters who would be breathing very heavy so you can actually show uh, the heavy breathing uh, by creating different effects to that at the same time there might be a fire effect or a cloud effect or a shadow effect or whatever and many of them uh, when we have an imaginary shadow then you need to add shadows to this thing so there is a team which actually works on adding shadows to the whole process and as you are actually creating all these things and moving forward uh, the lighting is very very important in in the case of 2d you take care of lighting a little earlier uh, while you are actually uh, doing the the keyframes and uh, you give the color palettes to uh, your coloring team and make sure that they are coloring it in right way so that your lighting is proper whereas in 3d you create the keyframes in the beginning and they are approved and actually put onto your screens as a reference so that everybody who is working on these scenes would match to that keyframe so that everybody is on the same uh, parameter of colors and uh, creating a same kind of effect so that you don't have to do corrections later on and the scenes don't go back so your color referencing and your keyframing is extremely important and once you have created that uh, you know list uh, then you actually go to the edit and that at edit level uh, you actually uh, start looking at it and edit and composition has to work hand in hand so once you see that all the scenes and the lineup is ready you give it to the compositor and they make sure according to this lineup and these number of frames from each scene you actually have the right uh, scenes with you you don't have an older version or uh, you know uh, non approved versions and then you get layers from different departments you get a layer from a background department you get a layer from you know character animation department you get a layer from uh, effects department and make sure that that whole layers are kept together in composition uh, and uh, a right frame is created uh, which would be an amazing uh, piece of uh, art as you see it and now uh, so much effort that is being done by various teams at that at that point in time uh, finally you get to see the right frame and that right frame alone is not enough because it has another layer that is going to come where people are going to do color correction and as you do color correction uh, you do a di uh, you do a color grading so that you actually are further enhancing the look and feel of those frames in a much better way so that everything is consistent from top uh, from starting to an end and you are able to see how uh, these frames are going to become a wonderful illusion of a series of frames which looks like a complete movie to you but the final layer that would be patched in at the end would be the music layer and the music will be done in tune with what is happening on the screen at the same time there are sound effects that would come into the uh, into the play where you actually have sync effects and the non sync effect and as you do the sync effects and the non sync effects you will be able to see that uh, something is louder something is uh, you know more than required uh, and at that point in time there is something called as a sound mix that happens whereas <clears throat> you are made to listen to a very comfortable and a nice frame uh, you you can see a nice frame but you can also listen to the perfect harmony of sound uh, whether it's a dialogue or a background screen uh, by a background sound or if it's a sound effect everything has to be in sync and in the right proportion if you're sitting right next to the sea and you you see that there are uh, waves coming in the sound of the waves if there are birds around you the sound of the birds so there would be a sync effect and a non-sync effect but they have to also be balanced uh, because if uh, they are overpowering then you will not be able to listen to the dialogue and finally as this mixing happens and the marriage of uh, the visual and the audio both happens together that's where you have the final film and i i would say that in the in the space of animation as you decide your 100 minutes frame by frame you actually create each and every frame to the required design 
and the desire that you have planned for and that's how you put all effort in creating that frame uh, uniquely and as you create that frame uniquely you will be able to see that there might be very simple things like there might be a baby sleeping and the baby might not be fully animated it's only the breathing but how do you pose that baby in the frame is very important so that you are able to see that the baby is breathing and sleeping and that actually still makes a perfect frame and that's where uh, one would say that more you actually pre-visualize and more you're stronger in the pre-production uh, you will always be able to create a great frame of animation and if your pre-production and pre-visualization is loose or weaker you will be actually failing uh, creating that kind of a frame and you'll be losing out on a lot of budgets uh, because any call taken post storyboard and animatic and design uh, would always cost you a lot of money because you have to go back to the board and do it again because there's nothing like you know make it work it's either good or rejected so you need to ensure that you have the right ingredients and you are able to do the right things uh, while creating the right frame and i think uh, this is how the grammar has to be followed so friends there is nothing which is a shortcut in animation it is a frame by frame process it's a very uh, you know strong grammar of creating animation and you have to have a very strong foundation of storytelling in animation and i would say uh, going further if you are trained with the right foundation of animation you can survive in live action at filmmaking or any kind of storytelling on the on the audiovisual platform because it is so scientific and so uh, full of uh, you know uh, process uh, orientation and uh, discipline that you need to follow while you're creating animation uh, thank you so much. Um, I have a question from one of the viewers. Uh, they want to ask, uh, how are the current trends in AR and VR? Because you spoke about the grammar of animation. How are How is augmented reality, virtual re uh, reality affecting the animation industry as stories are becoming more experience-led and immersive these days? So uh, is there a constant need to sort of reinvent and re-innovate all the time? Uh, to be able to keep up and cope up with these trends? Well, uh, I think the animation doesn't get affected because of AR and VR. It's the other way around. AR and VR is a different form of experiencing your story. It's an immersive form of storytelling. If right. your grammar, if you're a strong animation storyteller, you will survive, as I said, anywhere it will be very easy for you to create illusion in you know virtual reality for instance because when you actually are creating a virtual reality piece of story you are actually asking a person to go into you know behind a, a you know mask or a, a the headset or a headgear <clears throat> And you are actually trying to bring them to the world which is uh, which looks immersive to them and this is nothing new for animation it's probably one of the processes of animation moving forward that you acquire a little bit enhancing skill as you are moving into virtual reality because your basics are very strong if you're creating that thing what you need to create is the depth and as you understand in animation the depth creation uh, is already done frame by frame. Uh, you need to reverse that process if you have a live shoot uh, and you need to do a large amount of simple processes uh, frame by frame, layer by layer to create that depth into the virtual reality. So I would say that if you have a strong foundation of uh, animation storytelling, you would be a right candidate for actually migrating to virtual reality uh, story creation at the same time augmented reality also that most of that illusion that is created is also created through animated characters or 
mix of live action and animation or mix of visual effects and animation uh, and uh, life and that's one of the reasons that if you have that foundation right and then you have selected to be into the visual effects space it will be very easy for you to migrate or upgrade to the to the augmented reality as well so it's actually a matter of choice for a person but as i i would say that uh, the new ways of immersive experiences will keep on coming and the world will you know continue to evolve technologies and continue to evolve immersive ways of uh, storytelling uh, what you need to have is the right basics and the right foundation so that from there you would be able to kind of jump and grab the opportunity of all the new technologies that are coming and still remain relevant to deliver to those kind of formats that are coming Thank you. Um, Asita Rathor, uh, she is uh, one of our audiences. Uh, she's asking, which is your favorite style of animation? Also, uh, who are the animators and who uh, are the people who have shaped up uh, your uh, you know, uh, career in animation? Uh, tell us something about your journey and uh, how and when did you want to you know, pursue animation? Uh, how was that decision? How did that come in your life? Can you please tell us? Well, actually, I am very impressed with uh, a large amount of Disney style to start with. Uh, but as I started learning more into animation, uh, my background was uh, actually into uh, product management and marketing. And uh, I used to head a newspaper called Navbharat for several years in 90s. And that's when I went on a rotary exchange to Canada, uh, so a rotary exchange to the US. And now when I went to the US, uh, I met uh, quite a few guys who were from animation industry. And that's the time I learned in 1995 that animation would eventually come to India. And uh, as I came back, uh, quite a few uh, friends that I made in the US that time came to India. And because I was heading one of the newspapers, I started making cartoon uh, characters in Hindi because most of the cartoon characters which were available were all from the US. So we started creating cartoon strips for our readers who are in Hindi heartland. And as we created those characters, uh, the interest into animation kept going. Uh, but I didn't straight come into animation as a space. I actually uh, went into advertising and I joined Mudra Communications and I was heading uh, one of the divisions of mudra as a ceo uh, and although you know you are doing all those things but your heart constantly told you that you know the animation form of storytelling has to be established in india and uh, that's when uh, the first batch of uh, one of the schools that was created in hyderabad called heart entertainment academy passed out uh, in 1999 i decided to come into animation and I became the president of that studio and we started creating uh, animation, which is a hand-drawn traditional animation. Uh, what was most impressive uh, for us to see is to admire what people in Korea or Philippines or Japan did at that point in time. Uh, they were all hand-drawn traditional animation. Every frame was hand-drawn. And that was an amazing skill. There used to be big auxiliary cameras under which uh, the cells were uh, photographed and then they were painted and uh, frame by frame uh, you know uh, the drawing happened and the frame by frame uh, layer by layer the drawing and painting of those layers also happened and they were shot under camera and the moment was created which was a very tedious process before the digital animation took over but to answer another question that what i really like i like a person who is one of my favorite directors called uh, miyazaki uh, who has a very unique style and very unique storytelling. Uh, I have got a huge collection of Miyazaki and he is a Japanese uh, animator and a director. And he has told fabulous story in a very simple way and very simple styling. Uh, of course, Japan has got its own styling called anime. Uh, so the they had a very unique comic book styling uh, which is a manga style 
and then when manga was animated it became an anime, anime style and that is very impressive uh, because as you grow you see most of the girl properties in animation came from us most of the boy properties came from from japan and most of the preschool properties came from uk and canada because there were specialist people of those kinds not that other countries didn't try it but they uh, they tried but a large amount of popular animation came from there uh, as far as india is concerned we are still in the process of evolving our indian style and indian style of animation is a very realistic uh, form of animation and that's when i first created little krishna as a unique style uh, we were challenged with a lot of things because uh, till 2005 when i did animation for most of the american studios uh, French studios or Canadian or UK studios as an outsourcing work. We mostly did cartoon characters and cartoon characters had only three fingers. When we created, you know, little Krishna, Krishna had to have five fingers. Krishna had to have beautiful hairs, curly hairs. Krishna was blue in color and most of the activities happened in, you know, the open air that time because there was no electricity. So the water was blue, the sky was blue and we still had to have Krishna looking, you know, more eminent out of these two blues. His blue had to be really good. Uh, at the same time, there was jewelry, there were cloth. Uh, so, you know, there are a large amount of elements into animation as the areas of specialization, I would say, at, as of today was dust, fire, water, uh, cloth as, a, as an object to be animated, uh, jewelry as a, uh, you know, object to be animated. Uh, expressions of human beings and then if you have five fingers you have more animation to be done at the same time if you have hair uh, the follow-up of hair as your body moves is also a very unique style of animation so I think uh, as we are still evolving uh, you know different styles in India but I would say India is uh, on its path creating its own different styles uh, there is a Japanese style, there is a Disney style, there are certain other styles which have uh, been established. But India has a large amount of uh, traditional art forms like the Warli art form, you have uh, Tenjaur art form or many other art forms. And uh, uh, one of my friends called Munjal Sharaf uh, in, from Graffiti in uh, Bombay has created a wonderful show called uh, Krish Trishan Bhatli Boy and uh, Baldi boy and this uh, is talking about different art forms from india and each art form like madhubani to warli to you know tenjaur art form to any other art form is uh, very easily brought into life in animation and i feel indian animation will always remain very complex and very colorful uh, but we have many many traditional art forms which will come alive as we move forward and that will become a very unique style uh, so although I like to appreciate many other forms which are there in the country, but we are in the process of creating Indian styles and I would like to wait before, uh, you know, I really say that this is a style I like. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the Indian evolved styles that we create in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, so what do you think uh, the new students who want to pursue animation must learn uh, to be industry ready in the next five years? Uh, what are the essential skills uh, that they need to enter the industry? And what are the skills that they need to keep learning even as practitioners? Well, it's a great question because uh, a large number of uh, institutions are now teaching animation. Uh, luckily, large number of universities are teaching animation now. Uh, but I would say that they have to have a foundation program and many of these institutions don't have a foundation program. And I would say that you have not joined an animation industry, but you have joined an industry of storytelling. So at the end of the day, whatever you do, if it's not conveying the right story in a powerful manner, then you have failed in what you're doing. So you need to understand that you are in the business of storytelling. And if you have to make your career, you have to reset your goal because what happened with COVID-19, uh, you know, coming into our lives, the, 
the whole situation is going to change the consumption patterns are going to change people are going to watch more content so one thing is that students who are into this space uh, should be assured that they they have something to deliver because the content delivery is going to be very very strong moving forward people are going to watch a lot of content but how are you creating that content is very important i would say if in the next five years if you are thinking of doing feature films probably you have to rethink you need to really look at ott you have to look at television you have to look at uh, some different formats of stories at the same time you need to decide uh, which part of specialization are you going to do and that specialization would evolve only when you know the whole thing it's like mbbs i always compare animation to mbbs if you actually become an art specialist you have to still do an M mbbs only yeah. then after four and a half years you would do something called as uh, uh, internship and after that you will decide what specialization you want to do you want to become a gynecologist or a, a heart specialist or a brain specialist or oncologist or pediatrics or whatever so same way if your storytelling process is stronger then you will be able to pick up your specialization and still pursue your career uh, that way and i would say that most of the people who are unsure about what specialization they want to do please do a specialization in visual effects because visual effects is going to be required for i whether you do a television show or a ad film or a feature film or a ott show all of them require visual effects so you cannot go wrong if you are not able to decide at this point in time but the animation visual effects is such a such a space that you actually can continue to fine tune your skills and master two or three different skills at the same time but i would say when students are entering this and they want to become professionals in this five years they should concentrate on three basic things which are not been taught to them in the institutions one is that all students need to you know stand in the front of the mirror every day for half an hour and do expressions dance or dialogue delivery uh, and they should watch themselves uh, doing that and if they are able to do that with more perfection uh, they cannot fail as an animator because ultimately this whole action has to be transformed to the animation uh, some people who actually are going to create new characters backgrounds i would suggest that they should do drawing for at least one hour or two hour every single day inside the house and outside the house looking at the object and recreating that on a paper so that you understand what is the size relationship and how you actually are going to uh, transform that because observation skills for a storyteller are extremely important and you will be able to develop that observation skill and creating that hand mind connect in designing as you move forward and the third exercise as a riaz that i would like people to do is to take pictures nowadays everybody has cameras in their cell phones so take beautiful pictures inside the house and outside the house and edit them and edit them so much that in a month if you have taken 3000 pictures you should be able to find 10 best pictures and that's what will teach you where is the source of light and how important is the source of light and how important is the composition and what is required to create a right composition of a frame uh, so if you're going to reduce and edit from 3000 pictures to 10 pictures you would develop a skill of editing and composition yourself you'll start understanding it over a period of next six months as you do it as a riaz every single day so i i would say there are certain basics which are requiring observation skills and hand mind connect and doing it yourself uh, how much ever new uh, you know versions of uh, softwares will keep coming you will be able to adapt to those softwares in no time but if you lose the basic connect of observation skills reading watching films and uh, creating uh, something with your own hand uh, you are going to lose out big time so please concentrate on basics and uh, 
you will never lose uh, you will definitely be making it to every single show that you pitch for okay and what are the skills that they need to keep doing even as practitioners when they get into the industry what are what is that that you recommend because i see a lot of practitioners also still making flip books in animation and drawing right. and all of that so what would you like to say about that what are the things that they should keep doing so, even as look, i told you i told you three things very uh, you know right now that they should draw every single day right they right. should take pictures every single day they should act in the front of camera every single day i would add two more things that they should read very good stories and now that they also have uh, come to this industry uh, it's a blessing for them that they can continue to watch as many films as possible and watch it not for the for the sheer entertainment but watch it with your friends uh, for for the need of understanding the process of filmmaking and why a director would have done certain things and why they have taken this direction so uh, watch the films with the objective of bisecting it in dissecting it uh, in terms of understanding why the edit is like this or why the lighting is like this or why the music is like this or why a person have acted like this why they have chosen this guy as a character or this uh, female as a character so i think something like that is very important because for entertainment audience are there who will be watching it so you watch it once for entertainment but you watch it for the second time for the technical aspect of filmmaking so i think these are the five things that they should continue to do in their life uh, even if they become big directors you will see that the directors keep on doing this things okay all right uh, could you tell us something about uh, your uh, futuristic projects? Because we see animation is continuously changing. So anything uh, which is uh, extremely experimental that you're doing right now? Well, I think, uh, you know, Indian animation has to evolve a big time, as I told you. You know, it's not, uh, we, we're just on the tip of the iceberg. But what India has delivered in the last uh, one and a half decades as uh, Indian uh, you know, Indian shows have started doing well on uh, on television per se. Uh, we have the one of the largest populations of kids between zero to 14. And uh, we have an ample opportunity to really uh, see that most of these kids by default are watching animation shows. And as when we were kids, our storytelling was uh, through, you know, reading books or grandparents telling us stories. Uh, all this is replaced by the television channels today and somewhat with the gaming uh, what what kids do on their uh, cell phones or parents cell phones and iPads I would say that uh, you know this uh, whole exercise was subjecting them to certain form of uh, stories that are happening now uh, whether we are able to you know bring in uh, some moral stories uh, along with the stories that they are al already watching for entertainment or some edutainment I would say uh, like Baiju's is already doing uh, we are being able to do it in much better way at the same time uh, I would say that uh, at one point in time we were reading uh, commando comics and many other things so one of the key projects that I am doing right now is creating war heroes of India with General Bakshi uh, so we are going to tell uh, best of uh, the bravery stories uh, to the kids in the animated form. And it's not going to be only for kids because uh, this form of storytelling, we would like to be on the general entertainment uh, network so that people uh, would see it as a matured, uh, you know, audience too. Uh, at the same time, we feel that India in the next five to 10 years, animation right now which is uh, completely uh, you know uh, considered to be a kids genre uh, we would like animation to be changed to the family entertainment genre and i think that's where uh, some uh, light will be uh, thrown on this when we create war heroes of india which will be for general entertainment channel the family viewing at the same time uh, we would see that you know most of the shows that are happening in india are for girls uh, are for boys 
there are no no shows which are happening for girls so i am actually going to create the first girl superhero from india which is called maricom junior and it's going to talk about uh, self defense and you know bravery and uh, and and project a girl as a superhero uh, because uh, you know a large number of girls after the age of 10 11 12 12 starts uh, watching uh, general entertainment channel with their mothers because nobody is creating content for them so we would like to have some of the girl centric uh, content too at the same time i see that uh, there are large number of uh, younger kids in the space of uh, you know 18 months to uh, four years which is a preschool uh, what we call it uh, we consider preschool till the age of five or six but i think uh, the segmentation would be further done uh, that uh, six to nine would be a different category and two to four, two to five will be a different category uh, and Uh, there is not much of preschool that is uh, content is created in india at this point in time all the content that is created is between you know probably 6 to 9 or 8 to 12 kind of category so we need to bring different kind of content for these areas at the same time we have requested uh, the government to uh, start dd kids so that we are able to have much larger reach and uh, we are able to reach out to the kids uh, Uh, and of all sections uh, and create the right kind of content for them uh, so our focus in the future is to try new styles of animation uh, try a mix of 2d and 3d uh, which has already been tried several times but uh, we do it as an evident uh, cost exercise uh, at the same time we create some of uh, the unique girl properties and we create properties uh, which have very strong indian sensibilities uh and i think uh, that's uh, something that we would be concentrating on um thank you so much uh, for the amazing insights into the world of animation and animatics so it was a great session it was great interacting with you and learning so many things from you and i'm sure the viewers also benefited a lot today uh, so thank yeah. you for your guidance to our students and the viewers um so uh, we will uh, end here but please stay tuned for the the rest of the webinar uh, thank you so much sir thanks so much yeah bye